Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to show you how to create this kind of dissolving look. In order to quickly adjust and edit the shapes, I use the compound tool. In the layer panel, it shows up as one object. If I expand that one, you can see there's a lot of shapes inside. Each of those birds is its own shape and they are set to either subtract or add and I can still alter, scale, even edit the notes of each of those objects and yet when I export it or change it, it will react as one. I can give it a gradient color, add effects to it and it will react as one shape which also means I can't give the birds individual colors. It has to be one color for the whole object. For this example, I have a basic logo shape, something I quickly drew up, and a rectangle that will be the cutoff line, and a bunch of clip art birds I grabbed off vector see. Let's get started. I take the birds off for the moment and start with the two core elements, the rectangle and the logo shape. The rectangle will cut the logo shape, so I combine the two as a compound. By default, the elements will be combined via add. You have the option inside the compound tool to change that. There's add, intersect, subtract and XOR. In this case, we want subtract. The rectangle cuts the logo on the left side. Inside the compound, it doesn't matter if I have a different color or a transparent gradient. The objects will have one color and one color only and will be combined via the Boolean operation just as you would when you use the Boolean tools, except here you can still edit and change them. As a reference, I duplicate the logo shape and place it behind to give me an idea what has been cut off when I place the birds. Let me bring the birds back in by ungrouping the stack and making it visible again. Groups do not work in the compound object. You need to have vector shapes only that can be combined. Now I have my 14 different birds that I can combine with the compound shape. I just drag them in as you would drag into any layout or group. And now they're all added to the logo shape. If I change the color of the compound, all the elements will be changed. The advantage is now I can still move the birds individually, rotate them, scale them and place them to match my needs. The idea with this design is to have the birds fading off to the left and they'll be added to the logo and the birds fading off to the right, they will be subtracted from the logo, which means they are cut out of the logo shape. I did speed up this part of the video because it's all about the placement of the birds. I am duplicating, scaling, rotating and moving them. I try to have the larger birds and more of them closer to the cutoff line. I select a bunch of them and duplicate them and place them on top of the compound stack and then set the mode to subtract. You have to do that individually for every object. Once that's done, I repeat the process and place the birds, duplicate them, rotate them, scale them to make the design work. The problem is they are a little harder to 
select because they have a no fill being cut out now you have to click on the outline to actually select them again i tried to place more and larger birds closer to the cut line the big advantage of the compound tool is it allows me to edit existing objects and duplicate them so in this case i take a bird duplicate it and place it where i need it I hide the reference image and we have the logo fading into birds. I can now go in and change the colors, add a gradient, it reacts as one object even though it's made up of probably 30 different birds plus the logo and the rectangle. I can add all the usual effects to this shape now and it will react as one object. An outer shadow and a bevel work nicely to show you the shape. And all the time the objects themselves can be edited node by node. I can now go and select the compound object without any effects and for example export it as an SVG. Selection only and if I bring it back in, the scaling might be off but if I scale it down you'll see that the embedded object is just one shape. In order to make it editable, I copy and paste the vector shape from the embedded object and place it into my main document. That way I get a curve, or in this case a group with the curve inside. The compound object got exported as just one shape, which is ideal when I need to import into different software for different tasks. As usual, this is just one example of what you can do with it. You can use this effect on letters or words and replace the dubs with stars or hearts. Play around with it, have fun. It's a great tool and a way easier option than the destructive boolean operation that would probably be the first thing that comes to mind. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something new, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see on my blog, in my channel and I will see you again soon.